Hi everyone, this is the third part of this first lecture. We've already discussed what subsurface modeling is. We've talked about what the data is that we use for subsurface modeling. Now we're going to get into modeling goals and purposes. After that, we'll have a short lecture on different modeling strategies. All right. So I promise that this lecture will have no figures and may be a little bit dry, so I'll try to make sure it's not too dry for you as we go through this, and I can also go th kind of quickly through this. I should also mention that these, a list of these modeling purposes or goals is provided within my book, uh, Perch and Deutsch, Geostatistical Reservoir Modeling, second edition. So, one, one reason to build a model, and this might sound a little paradoxical or a little counterintuitive, is just for the model. And this is, to me, this is kind of funny because in a way we, we always say, well, if you model, it must impact the decision or adds no value. And we say, and that is true, but there's sometimes value in just building the model. And so this is the idea of a common earth model. Now you imagine you have a subsurface, subsurface asset team, which is in interdisciplinary. It's going to have geophysicists, ge geologists, petrophysicists, reservoir engineers, drilling engineers, and so forth, and probably people who work on the data science side, and there's going to be a whole group and a reservoir modeler and so forth, all trying to talk to each other. The reservoir model, or the subsurface model, I should say, it becomes a platform to integrate all available information to formulate a unified understanding of the subsurface. I've been on project teams before. I've seen the arguments. I've seen the debates. You could all think that you all agree. And then when you see the actual reservoir model, a numerical representation of the subsurface, it becomes immediately clear if there in fact is a divergence in the knowledge or the expertise within the, the team members. It becomes a numerical reality upon which everyone can now interrogate the net result of all of the individual decisions, all of the bits of information integrated from different directions into that model. And you can all interrogate it. There's no more arm waving. It has a numerical reality. We can establish what is known, we can establish what is not known, and we can start talking about the critical risks, the blind spots. We can provide numerical support for future investigation. We can take a snapshot and everyone says, okay, this is what we think is going on in the subsurface right now, and let's go from there. Let's try to gather new information. Let's try to do further investigations. We now know what's there and we can know what we need to do to move forward. It becomes a very valuable communication tool. And so I, I think that this is a great value, even though I admit fully it contradicts me every time I say, if you don't impact a decision, it doesn't add value. But we could say that that'll impact decisions because you're building that model and people are making decisions about data acquisition and so forth. But okay, so building a model for the sake of building the model as a communication tool as an integration tool. You may want to assess resources. You, you want to compute the gross volume over the area of interest and the associated spatial distribution of some type of resource that you have available in the subsurface. You would be considering the type of extraction method. Are you drilling it? Are you mining it? And so forth. Is it underground? Is it going to be open pit? And so forth. And so you'll consider the extraction method, the associated scales, the thresholds, what's economic, what's not, and so forth. So assessing resources can be very powerful with subsurface models. You might want to quantify resource uncertainty. There's so many uncertainty sources and so by building this numerical representation of the subsurface, it's an opportunity to integrate 
all of these sources of uncertainty, to understand their sensitivities, to understand each one of them impacts our knowledge of the subsurface is quite powerful. So these results may be used to direct data collection to reduce uncertainty. You may, you may decide, well, given the local uncertainties, we may want to focus over here instead of focusing over on this side right here because the uncertainty over here is much lower than the uncertainty over here. So this can, this can support us with regard to development decisions or maybe even public disclosures. Of course, paying attention to all of the associated relevant uh, legislation and laws and so forth with regard to those types of disclosures. We may be interested in investigating geologic risk. There's potentially a wide range of possible subsurface features. There's a lot of uncertainty and we want to understand what's the impact what's the downside risk what's the upside opportunity i'm actually a fan of mark bentley has a very good paper from a couple years ago and he talks about modeling for discomfort it's a great idea in fact he suggests that sometimes we model for comfort which means we do modeling just to confirm what we already know that we don't really try to seek out and understand potential risks so I think that's a great opportunity with modeling. Exporting statistics, quantifying information from a reservoir in order to use that as, as a set of statistics, an analog set of statistics to inform other, other locations within the world. This may include the trends, distributions of properties of interest, maybe even training images, variogram models. We'll get into more of this later. Reliance on analog information is pretty common in early development stages. And so there's plenty of places for which these exported statistics could find a new home and add value. Evaluate the need for additional data. You can calculate local and global uncertainty models. You can report them and you can show that the uncertainty is this big. All of the deciders in the room, everyone can evaluate that and make a determination relative to the cost of gathering new information and the cost of development and so forth of that uncertainty. You can then make a decision of whether or not you need to gather data. This gets at the heart of the idea of value of inf information, value of subsurface data, and we can do it by using modeling to, to support that. Assess reserves. Well, this is where we try to calculate the resources that would be extracted, applying economic thresholds, technical limits, and so forth. And these would be what's going to be reported directly. So reserves, of course, would be based on specific reporting standards and so forth. You could also use modeling to evaluate the impact of different recovery processes, decisions being made in the recovering of the resource from the subsurface. There's a plenty of different decisions we make about where we're going to drill, where we're going to mine, what's the order over which we're going to do it, what's the parameters we're going to use when we do it, all the other types of strategies that get baked into recovering resources from the subsurface. You can run tests, you can see what's the impact, the associated uncertainties, and you can decide on what method, what parameters, what strategy provides the highest rate of return on the project? Optimize the decision for economics. And of course, we can make final decisions based on our models. Now, we could do this if we're trying to choose the next well location based on a local best estimate model. That might be one approach. More sophisticated workflows would require us to look at heterogeneity, connectivity, recovery factors, and we would use multiple realizations and scenarios, and we would optimize the well site selection jointly over the available suite of realizations and scenarios. Okay, so that's it for this short discussion on model goal and purpose. We will talk about next modeling strategies. All right, stay tuned.